Um, hello, those are my coin friends. Uh, we are from group six, and now we're going to present our presentation about capital gearing and its implication. The members are me, Cindy Kusuma, Clarissa Charlie Winato, Jessica Aurin, and Sarah Valerie Patricia Nawi Pasaribo. So, what is capital gearing? Capital gearing is the amount of debt a company has related to its equity. It measures the relationship within the long-term borrowing of a company and the equity. And therefore, the long-term liquidity and liquidity ratios measure the short-term liquidity position of a company. The formula for capital gearing is fixed cost capital, which is debt, divided by total capital employed, uh, debt plus equity times 100%. Fixed cost capital is includes a longer loans, the ventures, and preference shares, while equity includes ordinary shares and all reserves, as all these are shareholder funds. Uh, next, Sarah. Next, I'll be explaining about high gearing ratio. Firms are more likely to be risk takers, maximizing the capital employed in the company in order to maximize the levels of profit. A company is said to be highly geared as it shows a large proportion of the capital employed comes from debt, which causes two potential problems for a company and risk. For the first issue, payment of debts includes interest and loans, debentures and preference share dividends require cash balances and affect short-term liquidity. For the second issue, these costs must be paid regardless of the amount of profit generated by the company. Low profit levels may mean that ordinary shareholders receive low dividends. And in addition, these also has, has an effect on future availability of capital lenders. May be reluctant to lend to companies that have high levels of debt and potential investors may be unwilling to purchase new share if the returns are low. Next, Jessica. Um, and I'm going to be explaining low gear ratio. A company with a low gear ratio could be said to be risk averse. With low gearing, the fixed cost capital will be much lower may be easier for a low-geared company to obtain loans or issue debentures and preference shares, as it has a smaller existing debt. However, it could be argued that a low-geared company is not taking advantage of the opportunity to raise additional capital for use within the company to generate higher levels of profit. And that brings to question low gearing or high gearing. It is generally accepted that 50% is the border between high and low gearing, uh, while low gearing is below 50% and high gearing is above 50%. Why 50%? High gearing has a high risk of debt and may be hard during times of lower profits. While low gearing means the business does not take much risk and will have a lower chance of development, that is why being in 50% might be the best as there will be lower chance of financial risk while still being able to develop. Next, Charlene. Thank you, Jessica. Now I'll be explaining the example. Here is the example of LG PLC and HG PLC. Based from the given information and using the formula, LG PLC gearing percentage is 13.64%, which is low gearing, while HG PLC is high gearing at 63.64%. How to change gearing ratios? To reduce gearing, you can issue new shares, retain profits rather than pay dividends or retain debentures. While to increase gearing, you can issue debentures, issue preference shares, or retain shares. Thank you, Sir Michael, for listening to our presentation.